Hello and welcome to a Plus R Made tutorial. Today we'll be talking about basic and intermediate corner loops. This video is aimed at players that understand the basics of May vertical dolphin loop theory. If you don't know how to understand vertical dolphin loop theory, recommend watching the video It'll be linked in the description. Anyway, let's get started. Let's take a look at our objectives. We're going to learn how to perform 2D horizontal dolphin force break launchers as well as how to perform different kinds of corner loops. We'll also be able to perform different enders so that way we can get knocked down into good Okizemi. We're going to add a couple pieces in there for flexibility and then get an idea of how these all fit together. Let's take a look at a demonstration combo. This combo is not optimal in Zappa. The actual optimal combo is simpler. However, I wanted to show several different elements so you get an idea of what we're going to be learning today. Let's break down this combo into a few simple parts. We're going to start with the launcher that's actually going to allow us to enter into the loop segment. We're going to go into port slash horizontal dolphin loops on peep, and then we're going to perform an ender to get knocked down. The demonstration combo, as you can see, use the five caves, a 2D heavy slash horizontal dolphin force break as the launcher phase. Then it used a 6P heavy slash horizontal dolphin for the first loop, close slash 6P heavy slash horizontal dolphin for the second loop, close slash 5H heavy slash horizontal dolphin for the third loop, and then use the 2D heavy slash vertical dolphin ender. In order to unlock a lot of May's big damage, it's important to learn the 2D into a horizontal dolphin force break launcher. It requires 25 meter to get the force break, and in order to perform the force break, it is required that you return to the neutral position, or 5. Recommended to think of the force break as a dash input that you then press dust after you get the direction out. Depending on what loop variant you're going for after this, you may need to perform a micro dash. The recommended input method using the, for the 5K 2D and no heavy slash horizontal dolphin force break is shown below. 4K to start your back charge, 1D to continue your back charge in order for the 2D to come out, and then going to 6 for your heavy slash to get the dolphin started. It is recommended you don't go to 3 since you do need it'll make it easier to return to 5. After you press the horizontal dolphin, then go to 5, perform your dash in order to get the force break, and then do a 6-6 six, six for a micro dash if required. A good way to initially learn how to perform the force break dolphin itself is to set yourself in training mode of infinite meter. From there, go to full screen and just press horizontal dolphin and go into the force break. As you get better with it, you'll be able to do that more rapidly. Once you're able to get somewhat consistent with the force break, you can practice blinking it after a 2D. Here you have a much shorter window to actually get the force break off. If you're too late, the horizontal dolphin will hit your opponent and you will not be able to get a good launch into the corner combos. However, you gotta make sure that you're not too fast, because then you'll be trying to do a force break while you're in the startup frames. If you do this, the force break will also not come out. Heavy slash horizontal dolphin loops feature a sliding knockdown. This allows you to go for another loop or go for an ender. An indication that you got the timing and spacing correct is that the dolphin's nose goes into the wall. If this is not the case, it is likely that you either drop the combo or have to go for a suboptimal save in order to get knocked down. The variations we're going to cover today are close slash 6p, close slash 5 heavy slash, and 6p. Let's take a look at them. The close slash 6p variant does require a micro dash in order to get the spacing correct. In order to get the required charge for the heavy slash horizontal dolphin, you need to start it immediately after you press 6p. The height rules for this variant are similar to vertical loops in that you want to hit heavier characters while they're higher and lighter characters while they're lower. The recommended input method is to, is to hold 6 as for, from the dash you're already doing into 6 slash, 6 punch, and then you can start your back charge in a 6H. Take a look at how the dash is performed immediately after landing from the force break. Also take a look at how deep the dolphin's nose goes in the wall. The close slash 5 heavy slash variant does also require some micro dash. This is usually not going to be the first loop you perform. 
the recommended input method does allow you to start the back charge earlier. Let's take a look at this loop. So here we're looking at the first loop of a close slash 6P into the second loop of a close slash 5H. Notice the micro dash used in both times, and notice that the dolphin's nose still goes into the wall, but maybe not as deeply. There is some variance allowed depending on the character and the loop area that you're going for. The 6P variant is the hardest of the ones we're covering today due to the very tight charge timing between the 6P and the heavy slash horizontal dolphin. You can buy yourself a little bit more time if you hold down the P button, but you can't hold it down for too long or otherwise you're going to drop the combo. The utility of this variant is that it is required for Axel, in which close slash 6P will black beat, and that some characters have a more lenient window compared to close slash 6P. Characters like Abba, Soul, Order Soul, and Lightweights. You have to experience different characters and their different and their specific timings to see what routing you like to go for. Notice with this variant that I only need to perform a micro dash. Upon landing, I'm immediately going to 6P so that I can start the back charge as soon as possible. If I don't get the back charge started soon enough, I'm either going to not hit Axel because he's just going to land. Or I might hit him where the dolphin's nose doesn't go in the wall and I can't continue the combo without maybe 77 more meter. Or I'm just not even going to get the heavy slash wars on the dolphin out in the first place. Once you are done performing your loops, you want to achieve knockdown. Knockdown you can then go for Okizemi. The variations we're going to cover today are close slash by heavy slash, 2P2S, and 2D. Let's get into them. The close slash 5 heavy slash variant is the standard ender, as it does a lot of damage. However, it doesn't always knock down lightweights. There is some timing tricks you can do to try and get knocked down lightweights, and this will usually involve you run deeper and do the close slash a little bit later. However, this variant is not reliable for lightweight knockdown, so it's not recommended unless you're trying to go for damage for kill. It does require a dash in order to get in close slash range. If you press close slash too early, you will get far slash. If you're too late, the close slash will whiff. Here's an example of using the sender to achieve knockdown. Two P two S is a situational ender. Compared to close slash five heavy slash, it does less damage, is only a little bit better knocking down while still not reliable against lightweights, but does have a larger window in which it'll work compared to the close slash five heavy slash. If you recognize that close slash 5 heavy slash will not work, whether it be maybe a longer corner combo, or you mess up your timing and you notice this maybe your dolphin's nose didn't get in the wall as much, this is a good ender to save your combo to still get knocked out. This ender is pretty simple to perform since by going in for the 2P, the down charge already starts. Notice that in order to get to 2P, I start my dash and then I press 3 to get the 2P out. The 2D Ender is useful for knocking down lightweights consistently, something that the other two Enders talked about today are not able to do. However, this is by far the hardest of the three due to its really tight charge timing. You can use this variant to save your combo somewhere of 2P2S, and there the trade-off of you do slightly more damage of 2D, or you have something that's easier to perform in 2P2S. In order to get the required charge, you need to pre-charge before the 2D. Recommend input method is to press 6-6 for your micro dash. Hold 3, and this will allow you to continue dashing forward, but then have your down charge starting. You have a slight delay in order to build up enough down charge, and then you press 2D in your heavy slash vertical dolphin. The timing here can be pretty tight. If you don't get enough of the charge, then the heavy slash dolphin won't come out. You also got to make sure that you don't delay too long, because then your 2D will whiff. Let's take a look at how this is performed. Take a look at how tight the timing is between going for the dash and then starting the down charge or performing the sender. Let's add in a couple pieces for more flexible combo routing. Between the 2D and the force break, you can actually add a one or two, depending on the character, <laughs> normal dolphins. 
This will allow you to do more damage for what is otherwise the same routing, and you have more time to build meter. I have had situations where I don't quite have 25 meter, but then I perform the one or two normal dolphins, and I get enough meter to perform the force break and then go in my corner combo. You can also use additional force break dolphins, which will require more meter, to either maybe your mid screen and still go for corner combo routing, or just more flexibility where maybe other routing that doesn't normally work can then be made to work. Here's a variant on Anji where we're going to add one horizontal dolphin. On the lightweights and a few of the middleweights, it is possible to do two horizontal dolphins prior to the force break. Mid-screen force breaks can be used to carry a character further and push them into the corner. Here you can see Robo goes across almost the entire screen. If you're in the corner, there's still uses for having more force break dolphins. In this case, we're performing combo routing on Kai that does not work without it. Here is our corner combo routing flow chart using most of what we talked about today. This chart starts with 5k 2d, and as you can see, breaks off into however many dolphins you want to do before the force break, and then your different variants of or slash horizontal dolphin loops, and then different enders. 2P2S is not used in this flowchart because that ender is, as stated previously, situational and suboptimal compared to other options. A good way to use this flowchart is to take a look at the bottom, find the character you're trying to combo, and then work your way back up to see what the pieces are. This flowchart will be available in the description. While this one is not explicitly on the chart, think of this as a base combo that you can then modify for optimizations against different characters. Here you're performing a single horizontal dolphin loop rep, so it's not really looping, straight into an ender. Here we have the same idea as the previous combo, however, we're using the 6P horizontal dolphin loop variant because of Axel. example on Johnny, we're actually able to perform two of the horizontal dolphin loop repetitions before we go into the ender. A particularly fun variant I like to perform is 6P is the first loop, and then close to 6P is the second loop. This is useful in a lot of lightweights and some of the middleweights. This variant is more strict though, in that if you perform a horizontal dolphin and then go for the force break, this routing will no longer work. Similarly, if your launcher or starter phase is too long, has too many hits, this variant will also break down. Here's a near optimal corner combo routing for Zappa. Notice that it is simpler routing than the demonstration combo, but it also does more damage. It is possible to add a single horizontal dolphin for, before the force break, however, that ends up making the combo harder and you only get one more damage out of it at full health. While the routing we discussed today starts at 5k 2d, a lot of what's in that chart can be applied to other starters. Here we are using a delayed air dash to two air buttons prior to going to 2d. Keep in mind that the length of your starter or how many hits before you actually go into your loops and the amount of time will affect the combo and what routing is available and not available. A good rule of thumb is if you're using something that goes into 2D is that two or more hits prior to the 2D will close off some routing. In this case, this starter has two hits before the 2D. Here's another example where we use a counter hit JH to go into our corner combo routing. A 
overhead kiss can actually lead in a corner combo routing depending on where you hit the overhead kiss on the screen. Notice here that we're hitting about mid-screen if we're back to the corner that we are closer to. Let's review our objectives. Today we talked about performing the 2D in a horizontal dolphin force break launcher. We learned how to perform three different variants of horizontal dolphin loops. We learned how to perform three different enders that are useful in different situations. We added a couple of pieces to, for a more flexible combo routing. And then we took a look at how some of these pieces can fit together. I understand that there's a lot more nuances with as you go into the different characters. However, that flowchart should be a pretty good guide. Help you to understand, hey, I can use this on this character, but I can't on this character. And that, hey, if I add a horizontal dolphin before the force break, this routing is not available. When I started working on this video, there's a lot about make corner combo theory that I didn't realize I still needed to learn. I actually had several misconceptions, and those were able to get cleared up thanks to everyone in Mate Chat. In particular, I want to thank Olive Oily. She's about two years ago. She helped me learn some of May's bread and butters. This has been the foundation for me learning May combos. Aloysius, Ukujiku, and Slav are particularly instrumental in helping me learn the specifics of why we use different loop variants and different enders. This overall gives you some very real feedback that I was able to take on so that I can more effectively teach you here today. Hopefully this video was helpful. It'll help you do some more big and fun damage. Have a great day.